Let's talk about the EKX 15 SP. Now this is an initial thoughts video, but I've been kind of slacking on it. So while I haven't personally used this out in the field, you know, I have tested it out here. One of my DJs has used it twice and I have had it out on rental, but I just haven't personally gigged with it yet. Um, I've still been, I still had been testing out my, my Evox 12s. So I hadn't switched over to trying out new gear in the field yet. But um, let's get into why. So if you watched one of my previous videos, you'll know my new main rental speaker is an ELX 200 series speaker, um, primarily the 12 inch, but I do plan on eventually buying the 10 inch and a 15 inch, one pair of the 10s, one pair of the 15s, but I'll probably have a couple pairs of the 12s. Um, but I wanted to go a step up in subwoofer and I might make a separate video on this, but I'll touch on it a little bit here. Um, somebody had asked me on that video, you know, why didn't I just go with the 18 inch ELX subwoofer? Why did I go with a 15 inch EKX? Well, part of it was I wanted to stay in the same relative dimensions as what I was replacing. And previously I was using the Yamaha DXS 12 Mark II. This is about the same size. You know, if you flip the, the Yamaha on its side, because the Yamaha is more of the tall, skinny style, this is more of the short and fat style. But they're relatively the same size and same weight, but you're getting a 15 inch here. And I'm always on the rental end considering space for the rental customer, because a lot of people show up in a car and I want them to easily be able to grab this by one handle and put it into the back seat. So a lot of 18s that takes out of the equation. Um, and in the ELX series, they only have a 12 and an 18. I wanted 15, so that instantly brought me up to the EKX series. But when you look at the, I know somebody had said, you know, the 18 inch uh, ELX sub is about the size of a 15 inch sub. You know, so I probably could have went with that one. And maybe I could have, but when you look at the specs, this is one dB louder. This actually goes lower. And I think maybe because of the cabinet size with that 18 being so small, um, I was looking at, they're, they're both rated down to 40 Hertz, but what you really have to do is you got to look at the frequency response chart. The actual peak for this one is somewhere between 50 and 60. Now it does, the peak isn't a very big peak. It kind of rolls up into that 70, 80 range as well. The peak for the ELX series 18 inch sub is between 60 and 70, right between there. So, you know, that's the difference. When you go up in series of subs, you're getting better drivers, you're getting better amps. Um, you know, you're probably getting a better tuned cabinet. I mean, maybe they tune that one just fine, but you're just, you're getting more for your money. There's a reason it's more expensive. There's a, there's a reason it's in a higher series. And essentially the video I wanted to, to make, because I said I was going to touch on it, is somebody in one of the EV user groups had said, should I buy two EV ETX 18s or should I buy four of the ELX 18s? And I was like, buy the ETXs. And some people were like, it's always better to have four subs, but that's not, not always. When you're thinking about the ELX subs, they just don't go as low. They don't hit as hard. I would rather have two premium subwoofers that if I needed to, you know, regular gig, I could keep them separated. If I was doing a really big gig, cluster them to the center, get that coupling effect in there. You know, it essentially turns your two subs into maybe three-ish subs. So you're getting closer there to the four subs, but even though you might not have the same SPL output, it's going to sound louder because they're able to go deeper. You're going to feel that bass more and you just, you just better driver, better amps, always go with a higher end sub. You know, a lot of people might not notice the minute differences in compression drivers, but you're going to know a higher end sub from a cheap sub because if you have a sub that hits hard at 80, it's gonna be, you know, punchy higher bass. If you get a sub that hits hardest at 60 Hertz, you're gonna get that lower rumbly bass because it's just gonna, it's gonna sound more like a subwoofer hitting lower. So 
That's why I like going a little higher end with the subwoofer as opposed to my tops. Um, but to keep my rental costs down, you know, the, the ELX tops are just fine. And the ELX subs are probably just fine too. But for my use, I really wanted the nicer sub. Um, and like I said, uh, so this is going to be my one rental sub. You know, I'm in this process of consolidating my inventory again. Um, so you're going to see me do reviews on high-end gear that is basically just for me when I go out for either DJing or live sound. And then you're going to see reviews on what our new rental gear is, is going to be. Um, and this is new rental gear or the DJs I send out. Um, but essentially I had 12s and 18s before for rental. Now I'm just going to have 15s and part, and that's just because I got rid of my shop during COVID. I got rid of my trailer during COVID. I just don't have as much storage space. Um, and the 12s were good for 90% of my rental customers. I think, you know, the 15s will probably be a good spot for them as well. Um, but let's dig into this here. Okay. So the cover, I know nobody likes me talking about the cover. I like that they've got the cable pocket on the back. Hand holes fit nicely. Sometimes those are misaligned and they're slightly off here, but you can still grab the, the handle. A little bit of padding in it. Slips easily on and off. Solid cover. Uh, as far as the sub goes, I like that it has the um, M20 threaded pole socket. Uh, another reason for getting the EKX over the ETX is uh, ETX does some weird recess threaded pole socket and I believe you have to buy Evie's pole. Um, well, I don't want to like be stuck with having to buy a proprietary pole. I just want a standard pole socket that I can put any pole I want into. So props for them on this. Uh, like I said, size wise, good size, good weight. I can actually take this subwoofer in one hand and walk it out to my garage. Like, I mean, obviously I'm in my basement doing this review. It's eventually going to go back out into the garage. When I go to open my door, I can put this, flip it up on its side, grab it with one hand, open my door, walk out and walk to the garage within one hand. Cause it's about 60 pounds. So it's a nice lightweight sub that you have that ability with. Um, sound wise, I think it sounds good. You know, this is obviously not a top tier sub, even though the frequency response chart says it does go lower. I still feel like it's kind of the, you know, like I said, the, when you go with the really high end sub, you get that nice, really deep bass. I feel like this is, you know, keep in mind, this is a 15, but I feel like this is a little bit more on the upper mid bass. You know, it might be able to go as low or it might be able to go down to the 60, 50, but it's not a real high peak at that 50, 60 range. You know, it's, it's kind of a, a tailored slope. You know, if you look at the manual, you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, but I will say, the 12s I was sending Chris out with, uh, every gig he'd go out with a single 12 inch sub, two 12 inch tops on the Yamaha stuff. And he was used to that. The first time out with this, he came back and said, man, I love that sub. It, his, his specific wording was it has so much ground base. I don't really know what that means, but I get what he's saying. Um, going from a bandpass design to base reflex, you just, you get a little bit more of that, that bassy feeling. Um, and this one obviously hits, hits lower. So it just, it just sounds like more bass. One of my issues with the Yamaha 12 inch, well, it worked for people and people never complained about it. It just didn't hit real low. You know, the high end sub is going to hit really low where you feel that rumble. The mid-level sub is going to be a little bit more in the kind of upper lower bass range, but then that Yamaha 12, I hate to say almost wasn't even really a subwoofer. It just kind of filled in the lower end, but you weren't really getting that super low, those super low sounds. Um, so I think the 15 is a good midpoint for people. Um, price, performance, size, and weight. I think this sub is a really good combination. 
and obviously no caster sockets because you really don't need it with this it's that light um but you know it's not all sunshine and roses there's things i do not like about this sub as well and this is my standard complaint with eevee my yamaha subs have a switch on the back that say throughput i believe or dsp maybe mm, don't quote me on that but essentially on my yamaha's it has a built-in crossover and say I cross the sub over at 80 hertz. I can flip a switch and have the outputs that go to the top be a crossed over output, or I can put the switch to throughput and connect it to another sub. Now the way Eevee does it is, you know, these are just, and I got a lot of comments on my turbo sound video, so I'm gonna try to explain this. These are just hardwired as throughputs. So as with the turbo sound, when I said it doesn't have a crossed over output, I got a lot of people saying it does have a crossover. Just go in the menu. You'll see the crossover. I get that. This has a crossover built in, but the built in crossover only works for the sub. So these always put out full range. They never cross over. But with like my RCFs, with my Yamahas, you can cross these over if you want, which means that if you are using this with a top cabinet that does not have a crossover built into it that you can select, you're, you're still good. And, you know, I've always wanted to stick with that cross, something that could do a crossed over output for rental customers because I don't know, if they just rent this, I don't know what kind of top they're using it with. And to get the best sound, you want the sub and the top to be crossed over and not have overlapping frequencies. Now I'm also going to throw this out there because a lot of people are saying, well, if you buy EV tops, it's fine. And yes, with the tops I'm buying, it's fine. I'm not caring as much on the rental end anymore, you know, because a lot of rental customers just don't know the difference on how to properly cross over tops anyways. So not a huge concern for me anymore. And the gear that I'm buying for myself is still going to be able to have all the features that I want. Um, with any gear that's rented from me, it'll work fine. Let's just put it that way. If you're using it with your own gear, I can't guarantee. So I'm switching my tune on the rental end. But what I want to bring uh, up, because all EV tops have crossovers built in, but what does not have the crossover built in is the Evolve series. And I see so many people in user groups saying, you know, what sub should I add? to augment the base of my evolves and a lot of people say oh I'll just you know throw this on there set the crossover to this and you're good to go no you're not you're not good to go because this doesn't have a crossed over output you're sending this is handling base and you're sending a signal out to your evolves that's full range then your evolves are still doing what your evolves always do and yes it might sound okay but you know what you're getting you're getting overlapping bass frequencies you're getting comb filtering you're getting phase cancellation which means you're probably getting uneven bass throughout your room so it is not good to add an ev subwoofer to an evolve system even though ev will be like oh yeah just buy this one it sounds great no it's not a properly set up sound system so my Evox 12s, I bought an RCF 905 sub with it, and it's small enough to fit under my DJ table. And when I run a signal into the sub, I plan on running the sub at 80 hertz, and I'm going to engage the, the output crossover so that when I send the signal to my Evoxes, my sub under the table is handling everything up to 80 hertz. And then everything from 80 hertz and up is going out to my Evox 12s. That is how you properly set up a subwoofer with a column array system. And I'll probably do some videos on that. I'm doing a wedding this weekend. I might bring my extra sub with me now just because I did my, I did my, uh, my Evox 12 review. So now I'm going to start to use that subwoofer to do a review on it and maybe do a video about how it combos with the columns. But that's the issue with just having hardwired throughput outputs. Put a little switch there. What is that? Like $2 to add a switch and have the outputs cross over? It's not that hard. One complaint with EV. I think QSC does it the same way. Crossovers are in the top. 
you cannot cross over the sub. But like I said, subwoofer still has a crossover. I can cross this over at 80, I think 100, 120 maybe. It's got a few different settings. But these outputs to your tops will always be full range no matter what you set the sub on. And that is the issue. Um, so, not a perfect sub, but definitely pretty solid sub. Um, this will, I have a DIY uh, DJ package that basically you get the Yamaha uh, Stage Pass 600 BT. Now that one, the output automatically crosses over at 110 or 120. Maybe it's 120. Um, you know, so these will still work with that. Um, you know, you wouldn't want to maybe have this set at an 80 hertz crossover when it's sending an out, you know, an output signal out. So I think it'll still work okay with all my gear. I'll just have to make sure the crossover for this is, you know, set to the crossover of the stage pass before it, before it gets rented out. Um, boy, what else to go over? Um, just to finish off the video, uh, as much as it seems like this video is really long and I did a lot of babbling at the beginning of it before talking about this subwoofer, um, I actually had planned on waiting to the end of the video to kind of talk about my, my equipment thoughts. You know, it probably seems, if you watch a lot of my videos, it probably seems like I'm in this weird perpetual never-ending downsizing cycle. But a few years back when I had my shop and my rentals were really starting to pick up, you know, I looked at my rental inventory and I had three different models of dual 18 inch subs. And I had one model of a single 18 inch sub. Well, my single 18s were what always went out. Nobody wanted to rent dual 18s. So I sold my Action 218As, I sold my Vantech 218As, and I sold my Event 218As. And my goal was, well, I, I still wanted to have the solid 18-inch sub. So I bought the Yamaha DXS 18 XLF. Um, bought four of those, great 18-inch sub. My plan was to eventually get four more, and then I bought the DZR315's tops, and, my, and I bought two of those, and my plan was to eventually buy two more so I could have a pretty massive ground stacked um, system. And then for the rental end, I wanted a lightweight, easy to carry 12 inch sub that still had good SPL output. So I bought the DXS 12 Mark II, 134 dB output, kind of punchy around that 80 Hertz range. So, you know, a fairly solid 12 inch sub. And like I said, the, the 12 inch sub was perfect for 90% of my rental customers. Nobody complained about it not having enough bass. Um, it got loud enough. But then there was some rental customers where the 12 inch was just too small. You know, we're doing a hip hop show, we want nice bass. So they'd rent my nice 18 inch subs. And of course, if you looked at one of my last videos, I replaced a driver in one and that cost me like 400 and I don't know, 60, 70 bucks, somewhere around there. Very expensive driver replacement. And you know that having Having all the different kinds of subs and going down to just, I've got 12s and I've got 18s, solid move. But over COVID, getting rid of my shop, getting rid of my trailer, you know, I have a single stall garage here that is essentially dedicated to my gear. Plus I have a storage unit and my bedroom upstairs has, my spare bedroom upstairs has gear in it as well. And I really want to consolidate everything to just fit in the shelving in my garage. So, high-end 18s, I really don't want to rent them out anymore. I'm going to sell my Yamaha system. Well, so let's put it this way. I decided to, I'm going to have my own gear. Um, with all this scaling down, I'm just not hiring new DJs right now. I'm going to focus on me going out. Um, I'll still send Chris out here and there, but primarily it's going to be me. So I, I'm building my own show of nice equipment. And then I'm consolidating the rental gear down. I don't want to send out nice 18s and 12s don't quite cut it for everybody. So that's where the 15 came in. 
But, you know, like I said, the reason for this 15 is it's sized the same as the 12 inch sub I had. So I'm hoping that where the, the uh, 12 inch sub worked for 90% of my rental customers, I'm hoping this will work for 100% of them and everybody that was getting the 12 inch subs, I hope they notice the difference with the 15 inch driver, you know, just filling out the base a little bit more and then um, I've heard things about, my, my 12s were a band pass design, and I've heard, and this is base reflex, I've heard things about band pass designs being very finite in the frequency range that they sound good at, whereas base reflex has a little bit more rounded sound to it. Um, I've never really done a side by side with say a 15 inch bass reflex and a 15 inch um, band pass. So I can't really speak to that as much, but like I said, Chris thought this sounded a lot better and I'm sure it does going from band pass to bass reflex and going from a 12 to a 15, even though specs are somewhat similar, this is just gonna sound a little bit more a little better through a fuller frequency range. I'd go a little bit deeper, a little bit higher, but overall just sound a little bit better. Um, even for myself, I'm done with, uh, I'm, I'm done with, ooh, that foot is a little loose. One final EV complaint, tighten your screws. And I'm not just talking about this. I've lost screws on so many different EV speakers. It's ridiculous. Like put some Loctite, I mean, invest in some Loctite on these screws. But anyways, I'm gonna stop babbling now. Um, that's kind of my downsizing plans. Uh, if I'm gonna do live sound production, I'm not, I don't keep my trailer loaded anymore. I turned down a bike night that I've done for years in town. Um, it didn't pay very well, but it was on Wednesdays and it was kind of fun to do. But I always had my trailer loaded in my parking lot. So I just kept that loaded and ready. I'd hook up to it every Wednesday and go over and do the show. Now, if I wanted to do the show, well, I'd probably have to rent a trailer because I haven't bought a new vehicle yet. I'm literally just hanging on with my Durango, fitting all my gear in there, so live sound is a bit of a challenge. Um, eventually, I would like to get a minivan. A minivan is my goal for a gigging vehicle. I'm just kind of waiting until things get a little bit more back to normal. Probably next year, I'll buy the minivan. But if I'm doing live sound, you know, corporate audio, if I'm DJing, I basically want to size my show to fit in a minivan now. And that's just, um, I'm getting old, uh, getting close to 40, 39 right now. Uh, I've lost a lot of motivation to do the really, really big setups. I just don't have the energy to do it anymore. So I don't want to necessarily get out of the business, but I'm trying to Consolidate maybe by higher end, smaller equipment that still puts out relatively the same quality of sound and, uh, you know, something where I don't spend 10 hours setting up a show. But uh, anyways, if you have any questions on this subwoofer, throw it down in the comments section. I'm going to use my RCF 15 inch sub um, for my next few gigs. It'll probably be a while before I give, you know, a full review on this and the... Uh, ELX tops that I bought, um, but eventually I will get to using all of the gear. I'll make sure I take this out to a wedding, probably a school dance, see how it sounds in a big venue, small venue, um, and same with my ELX tops, but it's more than likely going to be a while. Um, gigs are still a little few and far between for me, so uh, if I want to use a piece of gear for four or five gigs before I give a give a review on it. It takes a little bit of time. But uh, anyways, until next time, have a good day. And if you have any questions, throw it down in the comment section.